cast all my soul. <laughs> That's such a good, good song. We learned so much scripture during the 80s. Didn't we? Oh, oh, my yeah. oh, my goodness. So good. Good morning, Dawn. Good morning. to see you. Uh, praise the Lord. Does anybody else have a song they would like to read this morning? That was 42. We could keep going. God will vindicate us. Psalm 43. I'll read that. It's just five verses. Vindicate me, O God, and plead my cause against an ungodly nation. O deliver me from the deceitful and unjust man. Father, we just agree right now right. that Amen. you will deliver us from every yes. deceitful and unjust man. Yes. For you are the God of my strength. Yes. Why do you cast me off? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? Oh, send out your light and your truth. Yes. Let them lead me. Thank Let you. them bring me to the, here your to your holy hill. And, and to your tabernacle, and I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy. Amen. And on the harp I will praise you, O God, oh my God. God. Why are you cast down, O my soul? Why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, the help of my countenance. You know, um, I think of that whenever I'm down in the dumps. I'll say why are you so cast down? No, my soul. <laughs> Put your trust in God. And this is what I believe uh, David was talking about when he said, when I was down, I strengthened, I went back and I strengthened myself in the Lord. And so that's, that's exactly right. Why am I cast down? What's, what do I think? Well, and our emotions are not yes. the reality. Exactly. The reality right. is God loves you. Yeah. No matter what, that's yeah. right. And our emotions, yeah. and he's working, amen. No matter what, we usually don't see what he's we no. don't see what he's doing. Yeah. Nine, no. nine, 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 nine percent of the time, yeah. we don't see, and when we do see, we're like, oh. <laughs> But if we trust, he's good, always yes. good, yes. no matter what, he's good and loving. We, and we move beyond amen. how we feel, amen. How we he's working toward what is what is the right thing, but he's looking at the whole picture. Amen. Aren't you glad he doesn't just fix it, you know, snap his finger. He allows us to go through the process. He allows everything to take place, and it's not just you, and it matters to It's everybody around, everybody that is affected with you, and people you don't even know are affected. Yes. Mm -hmm. So praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I landed, on, I landed on 81. Okay, read. Yes. Okay. So, well, if yeah, you I'll like. Off the, off the <laughs> what version are you in? Oh, I can read off the okay. wall. Okay. Whichever I'm you'd in, like I'm to in do. One of, one of I think it's NIV. Okay. Dodge. Either way or, or um, yeah, whatever you come up with, that's good. Oh, sing aloud to God. Yes, yeah. amen. Uh -huh. Sing aloud to God our strength. Make a joyful shout, shout. to the God of the earth. Yes, Jesus. yes. Raise, Raise a song, song and strike the tent. Timbrel at the pleasant harp with the lute. Amen. Blow the, the trumpet, trumpet at the time of the new moon, at the full moon on our solemn feast day, for this is a statute for Israel, yes. a law for the God of Jacob. Amen. Amen. A law of the God of Jacob. Yes. This he established in Joseph as a testimony when he went through the land of Egypt, where mm -hmm. I heard a language I did not understand. I removed his shoulder from the burden. His hands were freed from the baskets. You called in trouble, and I delivered you. I answered you in the secret place of thunder. I tested you at the waters of Meribah, Selah. Oh, Hear, O my people, and I will admonish you. O Israel, if you listen to me, there shall be no foreign god among you, yes. nor shall you worship any foreign god. I am the Lord your God, yes, you are. who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Open yes. your mouth wide, and, it yes. will be, and I will fill it. Amen. But Go my, back down for just a second. I, this is where we, uh, a little, right here. I tested you at the waters of Meribah. And it's like saying, think about it. Yeah. Because he's going back and he's saying, I tested the Lord to see what he would say right. and see what he would do. It's okay to do that. Uh -huh. Isn't that interesting that we can say, God, I need you to prove your word true to me. Yes. And he knows our heart. Now, I'm not saying shake your fist to God. No. Although, 
if you're shaking your fist at God in your heart, you may as well say it out loud because he knows he it knows. anyway. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, and don't hide. <laughs> he can stick. Praise the Lord, he can stick. It's just like, don't go run and hide. Just say it. I've done it. I've gone out. I said, God, I'm mad. Why did you? Why did you let this happen? You know, whatever. <laughs> but but if you say it out loud, then you go. I started. I, this is funny. I found this note the other day. I sat down to write out my complaints. Oh, now they weren't oh, against God so much. They were against everybody. Uh -oh. But I sat down, and I all that could come out of my mouth was blessing. And I remember getting halfway through, and I thought, wait a minute, I was going to write down all my complaints. <laughs> but it was just blessing. And, you know, I I love writing down my complaints because I'm not putting it out in the air. I'm just putting it on paper, and then I just tear that thing up or shred it or whatever. Yeah. And then, and but it, there's some times when you start to do that that you realize, oh, my goodness. God is still good to me. How Amen. Be yeah. <laughs> and that's yeah. exactly what happened. Yeah. So, okay. That, but yeah. I just, that's such an excellent thought because we can ask the Lord and we're not testing him above what he can be tested. <laughs> yeah. We are just simply um, giving him opportunity to prove his word. Yes. It builds right? Faith. Yeah, right. It builds it builds faith. Faith. It builds you know your faith. Yeah. And it builds your relationship yeah. with yeah. him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I trust him now because he said yeah. this. I trusted it. I I tested it. And he's and he even says in Dick, I tested him at the waters of Meribah. Think about it. You know, can, I, can I give a really good yes. tip? This just came, this just happened yes. in the last like three months. Oh, good. My ex husband and I were were chatting and I said and he said he was asking me to teach him like how do you see these red flags? How do you and I'm like, Well, it's a relationship, you know, and I just ask, like if I see something weird then then I go, huh? that makes that trigger something so then i asked god, then i asked to talk to the lord Absolutely. about it right and he was like and i said well what would it take for you to do that like what because for me it's like a gentle nudge anymore it's right. like i know if the holy spirit nudges me he's right. gonna hound me if i don't do whatever that thing is or express right. that right so he's like well satellites would have to fall out of the sky well, right. and i was like and i was like because he kind of rolled his eyes and i was like and I and I was gonna blow it off because he right. was being sarcastic. And I was right. like, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> satellites would have to fall out of the sky. So I'm thinking decades from now, <laughs> satellites might fall. But do you guys remember that 40 satellites just fell out of the sky? Oh, that happened the week that week, the week that he said that. God. And I said it wasn't even a man-made. It was from a, 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 a astronomical an anomaly that it happened. It wasn't even like a mistake from man. It was like. <laughs> No doubt. And he still has not. I'm like, right. <laughs> I mean, oh, no, I called him immediately. Oh, right. I was like, satellites are falling out of the sky. Because <laughs> I told him when we made a deal that if that happened, when that happens, right. I said, not if. It's like, when this happens, right. this is going to be our marching orders. This means that wow. God is saying, it's time for us to move on some of these things that I've been seeing and feeling right. and sensing. And uh, and he was like, okay, and satellites <laughs> would have to fall out of the sky. And so I was like, satellites, man. That's amazing. And yeah, he still is, he still is like very, he got, he gets it though. He's right. He's shakes a little bit now when I mentioned That's it. interesting. He, he gets a little like, oh. So yeah, we yeah. just agree with you. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Soft yes. heart yes. toward the things of God right yes. now. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, that your love is surrounding I him. I He'll have you. dreams and yes. visions under, and wisdom in the yes. night will come to him in Jesus' name. Yes. And he'll begin to realize where it's all coming from. And his courage and will come from you, you, Lord Jesus. Yes. Supernatural courage. In yes. Jesus in Jesus' name. We agree. We agree. Again, you believe it. Just for what a great example of this. That's I was like, example. okay, and I know God will do it, but I was thinking, well, that's going to be a long time. Right. <laughs> and that very week, I could, I just laughed so hard whenever he acts a little weirder. Doesn't want to, you know, obey or in, uh, yeah. whatever. I just laugh at him and go, satellites. Yeah. And satellites, all I have to say. Satellites. <laughs> oh, yeah, so, um, so great. I'm going to do that so good. Good. Fill it. Yeah, 40, which is another right. good sign. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 40. 40 is the number of right. testing and then oh, oh, revival. Oh, my word. How and, Yeah, 40, the number 40. <laughs> because, you know, we do 40-day fasts. So they were in the wilderness That's 400 right. years. Yes. Or, or 40 years, excuse me, 40 years in the wilderness, but in, oh. in captivity. For Jesus, 40 years. Jesus. Days in the 
wilderness. Right. right. Yes. I can't right. wait to add all that on. Yeah. Now what I see. <laughs> That's how exciting. Uh, that is so much fun. I mean, it is just so fun. It is so much fun. Yeah. It's so fun. The uh, disciples so yeah, were settling. 40 days before oh. Jesus left. Yes. Exactly. And it was 10 wow. days then to Pentecost. 40 days with them wow. after the resurrection. 40 I mean, 40 like is a God big, is 40 important is, uh, number. 40 is, or, uh, we've been counting the Omar, and this weekend is Pentecost. That's right. So we That's are right. At, uh, starts is, Friday night. Starts Friday night, which is actually when we start the first pass, uh, fire, fire camp. camp. Woo-hoo. So, okay. We'll, then we'll take down the wheat and the barley, but that was our kind of our reminder that we're counting the Omar to right. the 50 first days. fruits to now. First fruits to now. So believe it or not, it's been almost 50 days since Passover. Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Billy Graham told the story of uh, he had, they were in a foreign country and they were out on the street doing street ministry. And this guy, I, I don't know if they were in a foreign country. They may have been in America. Anyway, this. Um, he, he walks he walks up to this guy and he has a baseball cap on and he, he doesn't look he doesn't look like Billy Graham you yeah. know he doesn't have right. a suit or yeah. anything like that and he said I walked up to him and I said hey do you know about Jesus or whatever he said and uh, the guy said oh you know it would take Billy Graham walking up to me <laughs> <laughs> and he goes oh my he goodness. took his hat off and he said well I believe. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! That was so fun. <laughs> yeah, I think he, I think the guy said, "Oh my goodness, I'll come to Jesus." Right? Oh, yeah. 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 It was like one of those yeah. moments. <laughs> I will come to God. But anyway, oh, anyway, awesome. praise the Lord. Yeah. So, can we try him? Can we test him? Yes. yes. <laughs> and that statement was right there. I mean, yeah. it's not a big deal with God to yeah. prove Himself. Yeah. That other day, I had told you about my. Uh, my nephew that's married to my niece, uh, he had said that he was going to come to the Lord when they found the ark, remember? Oh, oh. And so I'm, I'm wondering if I can pray the prayer for his heart. Yes. So Amen, we agree. Amen. Yes. In fact, we all probably Adam. have people that yes. have hearts, that, you know, their hearts are just hard and they're waiting for the right moment. Listen, today is the day of salvation, Amen. right? Yes. So Father, right yes. now, we thank, thank you. That these, these, all of these children are coming to you. Yes. These yes. ones that we love and are seem to be afar off right now. They are coming in and we just give you glory and praise for how you're dealing with them. Soften their hearts. Help them to hear from hear the word of the Lord in the night. Help them to hear it, and just supernatural things that happen. God speaks to us in the natural and the supernatural. So, Father, however you're speaking to them, Lord. We want to be the best at hearing, but we want them to hear you, too. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Lord, help in Jesus' yeah. name. We need your help. Yes. And we just give you glory and praise. And we want to hear and we want to obey in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. That's really good. Okay, go ahead and finish reading. That's it. Uh, uh, okay, uh, but my people would not hear, heed my voice. <laughs> there it is. Israel, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah <none of> <laughs> exactly. And Israel would have none of me. <laughs> <laughs> so I gave them over to their own stubborn heart to walk to their own counsels. Oh, that my people would listen to me, that Israel would walk in my ways. I would soon subdue their enemies and turn my hand against their adversaries. His own hand. Yes. The haters of the Lord would pretend submission to him, but their faith would endure forever. He would have fed them also with the finest oh. of wheat and with the honey from the rock I would I have satisfied you. So uh, we just agree with that yes. right now, that their hearts would become yes. soft yes. and that, Lord, that they will listen. Now, as most of these people we're talking about are not adversaries of right. God. You right. know, they're not like shaking their fist at God. They're just simply, oh, it's just not the time or, oh, I'll yeah. do it when I get ready. And that's what we pray right now. We're in agreement mm-hmm. that we will listen and not hard, that we will listen and not harden our heart toward the Lord. And that includes all of us. Yes, we want yeah, that, but we yes. especially want our, those that are just on the fence and just not sure. We just ask Father right now for the move of God. Yes. All right, let's go ahead and let's just dive in. If you don't have notes, the notes are up there on the counter. And we're going to be kind of starting on page five um, of those notes. And I think i that's about all I put on there. Now, my hope is to, um, to get this to a place where we can publish 
the notes again. Oh my goodness, I forgot how ornery this is. Yeah, <laughs> I need to get a screwdriver. And press it. Um, anyway, my my hope is to get this to a place where I can publish the whole thing, and then you can just you'll have a book of notes, and then um, it won't be there. Is that better? Can you hear me? Yeah. I think I need to turn. No, no, this up. Test, test. Yeah, either one. Oh, either one? Yeah. Is that a little bit better? All right, we'll just have this because of, um, I want to make sure everything picks up. <laughs> All right, so we're kind of on page five. And I want to go through, oh, yeah, the Samaritans. Okay. Um, we left off. It's been a couple of weeks since we did this. So as we, <laughs> I'm going to kind of back up just a little bit so we can kind of remember. So remember that. Israel became two nations. It did. It was not two nations. It's one nation, but it, they split. And uh, remember, Jeroboam uh, kept Judah and Jerusalem and the temple, and all of that was down here. And no, no, Rehoboam. Excuse me, Rehoboam. And then Jeroboam went up here, began to um, build altars and sacrifice to other demons. And um, this split the nation of Israel right down the middle. Ten tribes were, ended up up here. Uh, two tribes, which were... Benjamin and, and Judah. Judah. And Judah. And they stayed here. And they had they kept the temple service going. And, the, and, and I'm sure many of the other ones did travel down. But um, he, um, Jeroboam, built a... Altar, clear up, well, here, that L, right here, right, right. there's one. He built one altar here, and he built one way up high. So, oh, you don't have to travel down to Jerusalem. Just stay up here. And God had commanded them, right, three times a year, you go to Jerusalem, and you worship in Jerusalem. Kept them, kept them safe, kept them in a place of returning back to their roots. It's a good thing to remember. We do Passover every year. We remember what happened when we were in captivity. We talk about it out loud. We remember all of those things. And that's what Passover is so fantastic because it takes us all through the whole story of how we rejected God and then we came to God and then now we, we are going to pass over into the promised land. So, um, so there it is. There was the division. And remember up here, I'll just briefly go through this. We talked about how um, <clears throat> the people of Samaria came down, not Samaria, but um, uh, the Assyrians, Syria, and they came down. They took out a lot of Jews, took them back to their nation, took them back and spread them out. And they brought in some uh, Syrians and brought them in and had them settled in this land. And that was how they divided the nation and made it weak. Okay? So we pray right now for our nation that it will not become weakened by those who don't love America. That want to, you know, those people when they came in, they didn't love America or uh, Israel. They didn't come in and say, we're breaking down the altars to the other gods. They loved their other gods. They brought them into Israel. And it weakened the land. So um, anyway, and they were just, they were called Samaritans. And they, they were good Samaritans, right? The good Samaritan. That one story there, you had the Samaritan woman. You have, you have a lot of good stories there. Good people who really did love the Lord. They continued obey, uh, worshiping and obeying the Lord and obeying the laws. Uh, and the commandments, the Torah. And they were Jews. And they were Jews. There were a lot of them that stayed true. Actually, a better Jews. phrase might say they were Hebrews, because the Jews comes from the word Judah. Judaism. You're oh. exactly so, right. Hebrew. Hebrew. They were all Hebrew people. That's right. That was right. It didn't take away their... The Jew, Judaism gets into a lot of religion, and so you're, that's, a, that's a good clarity uh, on that. Okay, so... Then the other things that were happening was Hellenism, and I think we read this. Did we read this? You let me know. Greek culture was rising. It was like the because of Alexander the Great and the things that he did. He was bringing in Greek culture, Greek literature, Greek drama, 
Uh, Homer had already written the Iliad and the Odyssey, which is fascinating. Um, Greek art experienced a great awakening. Um, and so it says the greatest and most astonishing revolution in the whole history of art was happening during Greek art. Sculpture and stone, architecture and figure painting. How many of you have been to the Louvre? Anybody? <laughs> you get sick of online. looking at sculptures. <laughs> You're like, another one? <laughs> really? How many of these do you need? Oh, but amazing. it's all through the Louvre and they've got them all stored. And then half of them are just kind of tossed aside. Because what do you do with all of them? You know, they're just, it's ridiculous. And it's people, they don't know who that is. And, you know, so <laughs> anyway, but it was a big deal. They did it. Sculpture and stuff. Greek architecture succeeding uh, in harnessing immense technical skill. Greek science was simply a branch of general philosophy or the love of wisdom. Now, here's here is where the um, the Stoics and the Gnostics came in. The Gnostics were ones who basically worshipped wisdom. They were very smart. They were looking for the wisdom of the world. How many of you heard the term believe the science? <laughs> We've all heard that ad nauseum, haven't we? Believe the science. Well, that's what was going on here. Believe the knowledge that we have. It's, but it was man's knowledge, not God's wisdom. And so they were pointing to God's or to man's wisdom and and but and trying to disavow God's wisdom and going to God's law. But, Coffee. but <laughs> yes, Plato, Aristotle, Sorry, and please. some of these Sorry. philosophers, if you read their writings, they all allude. They don't come right out and say it, but they all allude that there is one true God. That's exactly right. And that the, the other stuff is superstition, the belief mm -hmm. in Zeus and, mm -hmm. and right. Hera and all this other craziness. There were a whole bunch of these people that probably studied. Yes. The Bible, the word. The word and studied in the Middle East at certain points to understand the truth of the one true God. I and agree. they believed it. I agree. And you know, that has been true all of history. Mm -hmm. They all believed that God was real. Whether they actually believed and followed God was different. Yeah, that's different. Even the kings but, in the but very they knew beginning. It. In their they hearts, knew. they knew there was just one true God. When uh, the king uh, said to Abraham, you know, God gave me a dream like your God. Gave yeah, your me a dream. God. You know, it was like, I know who your God is. And I he's know real. He's the real one. And he's real. And exactly. And so, and that was way back, right? I mean, That's Abraham early, early time. is Later. in the like 2500 uh, BC or something like that. So um, they, but that's Genesis chapter, let's we'll see, it would have been after 12, but you know, maybe 1520, something right in there. So, but the, the, the thing is, up, clear up through history, and we'll talk about this a bit, because in the 1850s, that's when things begin to change, where science said, we're going to deny God completely, deny that he exists. And so the last 150 years, we have had some of the most ridiculous things come out, totally. because the, they are rejecting the truth of God, rejecting God's word, and Psalm 2 is exactly right. We want to break the Rage chains. against the nations. And we want to say no. It's the rising up of the nations who say no. We are war against God. Pastor, do you know before his you know, death, did Charles Darwin come back to God? It's now, I don't know if he came back to God. There was a whole, I want to say conspiracy. Well, the Bible says conspiracy. Right. Right. So let's use that word. It's so good to see you, dear, this morning. So um, there's notes up there on the on the desk. So the 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 whole conspiracy was how can we make God irrelevant? And they knew they had to go through and attack religion. They had to go through and, and uh, establish themselves in education. They had to establish themselves in science. They had to establish themselves in every high mountain. Right. And guess what? We are dealing with that right now on right. every high mountain. Right. Basically, the occult or the opposite, trusting in God, is in play. Um, Darwin 
did Darwin not, was the one did, who did took not science. come out and say at the end that he believed what he had, but he he alluded again. It was an allusion to the fact that he thought, well, maybe what I, I postulated isn't real. Isn't fact, right. yeah. And I, maybe we shouldn't be teaching it as fact; mm -hmm. it was theory. And for a long time, they said it, the, the, uh, theory the theory of evolution. Theory of evolution, yeah. right. but they dropped that, right. and now so now they just say this is it's evolution. If you and lie enough, the lie becomes exactly. Right. <laughs> And change the verbiage a bit. Um, so, um, but who was the guy who started? John Dewey, who started oh, the educational man. system. Oh, His boy. whole thing was Karl looking. Marx, Karl Marx, Marx, Lenin. All of those guys come out of the 1800s. And that was politics and the polit political system. You know, they they wanted to bring no in socialism God. and Marxism and fascism, fascism. And then you've got in the religious realm, and we'll talk about this. We'll really spend time on it. That in the religious realm, you've got people who started to write Bibles. And um, Schofield totally yes. was oh. the first one who actually wrote a Bible that, where he tried to make the theory of evolution Fit. workable. Yeah. And so he just changed a few words here and there, making it possible for Christians to be deceived into believing the evolutionary theory is correct. There you go. Finance. finance. <laughs> but we'll spend more time on yeah. it. Yeah. In finance, the Federal Reserve was Federal in, Reserve. central banks all over the world right. came into being as a part of that takeover that there's nothing about God in our finance system anymore. Yeah. yeah but you know, believe me, the opposite is in effect. That's right. And and we know that. So absolutely. All right. So all of this has been around forever, can I just say? Uh, since the days of Cain, Cain yep, killing yep, Abel, yep. and then boom, uh, that, that war against God started uh, in full force. Satan started it in heaven. He hated God and, and wanted what God, I will be like God, he said. And then you have man finally saying, well, yeah, I want to be like God. And that's what they've done down through time. And But the Greeks, like, really raised it to an art high level and uh, science and then I just list some of the things Thales, Democritus, uh, Hippocrates uh, he and there's some good things that came out of this like him, him taking medicine out of the realm of religion and magic and saying that we do need public health we do need hygiene we do need patient care and uh, we do need surgery because there are times we need surgery so right <laughs> and then uh, natural sciences and math uh, made enormous progress. Uh, Hipparchus Hipp Hipparchus made a fundamental discovery and made fundamental discoveries in astronomy. I would say he probably looked at Job <laughs> because Job has a whole lot about astronomy in the book of Job. Aristotle wrote systematic works in both physics and biology, and his classification of animal species forms the basis of all subsequent. Zoology. Look at you, one. Um, good question because oh, okay. <laughs> I it's uh, let's see. There's a heading that says the Samaritans, and I'm quite a ways down from that. Do you see the Samaritans? I was thinking that was on page five. No, but I'm going to be wrong. Which is the top of the line? Try. Um, there's another one that says Greek science. I'm going to grab a set of notes. Okay, uh, you know what? I'm going back too far and some of you don't have those notes. So anyway, let's just move forward then. But that kind of brings us to, to where we are with Alexander the Great, which is at the top of page five. Okay. So um, we just need to remember that all of this oh, right. Greek stuff was happening. Olympic Games oh. were already in play. Um, wow. uh, yep. And then the, and, and at one point when we read about Herod, you'll see that it's been done for 192 years at the time of Christ. So it was in play for a long time during this time. So think about it, 192 years and not doing it every year. So basically during the Greeks really brought in the Olympics and made it something. So 
um, let me just say, political vocabulary came in with the Greeks from anarchy to politics is largely Greek. Uh, and then uh, re research in geometry and mechanics, scientific medicine, anatomy and physiology, all of that. And Aristotle was the practitioner of the ins of inspired common sense. <laughs> he was the systemizer. And he did a whole lot of stuff. Okay, now we're going to start. The, your heading should say, on the political scene, Alexander the Great was rising to power. But on my notes, on your notes, I see that it's, it's stopped there. It doesn't start till just a little bit. But Alexander the Great um, rose to, started rising to power, and his father was a great military machine. His name was Philip. Yes. He was the one that he wanted, uh, he wanted the absolute best for Alexander the Great. And he actually hired, um, when he was Aristotle. 13, he hired Aristotle. Aristotle as his personal tutor. Can you imagine having Aristotle as your personal tutor? So then he learned all about uh, politics. He learned all about all of this stuff. And he also learned the art of war. And he understood war right from the very beginning from as a very young child because his father was actually one that began to take war to a high level yes. in the world. And it became, now it became, let's study war. And so they would begin to study, you know. It wasn't, so for a long time, it was basically the farmers, right. you know, would come out and defend their land or the, the clan mm -hmm. or the, you know, whichever group of people were inside the fortress walls, they would defend their fortress and but then it became to where now at this point in time where they have to study war and they have to understand because if they don't study war, a nation is going to come in, carry them away like they did with Israel. And now with Israel, you have Israel that's just trying to come back from captivity during this time. They are regrowing their crops. They're kind of living, you know, day to day trying to get things going, rebuild the temple, build, keep their families fed do all that stuff, and that they had to say, you know, Nehemiah had to say, get a sword in one hand and get a, a picture in the other, and we're going to try, you know, we're going to keep it going. So you had to you had to study, but you had to understand that other nations are going to come in and destroy you. So it became a big deal. It wasn't like, let's all live and be happy yeah. and, you know, love each other. It was like, we better protect ourselves or we're going to, that fortress back there of David, I mean, that's a that's a great picture of de defense oh, and yeah. how they would build those walls up. And um, anyway, all right. Now, Alexander fought with the finest military machine. Hold, mm -hmm. hold on. Let me see if we have that here. It's on the screen. Oh, good. Yeah, Thank you, screen. brother. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um Primarily because of the amount of time and effort spent on maneuvers, he would he wanted to rid the world of tyranny and oppression. God bless him, because <laughs> until Jesus returns, that's not going to happen. And he also sought revenge for the, on the Persians for their invasion of Greece in 14, 490 BC. In 333, that was a long grudge, wasn't it? 150 year grudge he held in because of his, I'm sure, because of his family. Alexander defeated the superpower, the nation Persia. And King Darius. Okay, who became the queen of Persia? Esther. Esther went during yeah. Esther and Xerxes or Ahasuerus uh, during that time. This gave Alexander much of the region, and he found Alexand he founded Alexandria, which became the center of commerce and learning. Okay, now that is at the top of page five in your notes. Okay. Alexander was not was at the highest power right there. Okay. Alexander was not at the height of his power. His empire stretched from the Ionian Sea to northern India. He wanted to combine Asia and Europe into one country. Okay, think about that. Asia, large nation Asia, and uh, Europe into one country and named Babylon, which is in it, uh, Iraq, Iraq. Uh, the new capital. And it's interesting that he did that. So think about it. Is he is he looking for God to be the ruler of the world? He's probably going to the Babylonian system there. He's going to the Greek system, and it's not going.
going to God. Okay, and we know that Babylon in the last days, Babylon rises to power, which Babylon, I believe Babylon is a whole lot of uh, words that we already understand. Deep state, the, um, oh my goodness, help me out here. The, the World Economic World Forum. Economic <laughs> Forum. All of those, the, the military complex, the, all of those things that all work in cahoots together mm -hmm. to not bring God's plan on the earth, the but to Illuminati. bring their own plan, which is not to love God, but to shake their fist at God and to um, destroy what God has done. Right. They want to the break Illuminati. They want, the Illuminati. They want Satan to be the, in charge. Right. Freemasonry. Right. The, Freemasonry. The, Freemasonry. The, whole, the whole systems that we know that fight in war against God, which is kind of silly. We just think, how can they? I mean, I used to think, how do they think that they are going to come against God? That's going to take that all the way down. How do they think that we can't forget Psalm 2? Amen. Which states it so plainly. <laughs> we just have to remember over and over, and it's all through the work, but I'm just saying right here, it's plain as day. Why do the nations rage? Right. The people plot a vain thing. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together. We hear about these Davos meetings. Mm -hmm. We hear about those these councils of foreign relations. relations. We yeah. hear about those um, the Bilderbergers. Yes. They're not asking God for help. No. They're actually asking Satan. Right. Okay? Let's just be real clear. And they want Satan's plan, not God's plan. And the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed saying, let us break their bonds in pieces. In other words, God's bond. Yeah. We want to break what God has done and uh, break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. And this is where it says, he who sits in the heavens just laughs. He says, the Lord shall hold them in derision. He's like, are you kidding me? Then he shall speak to them in his wrath. So his wrath will come and he will destroy Amen. every work of the wicked one. Mm -hmm. So, but we know these things have been in place since Cain. It started mm -hmm. way back at the beginning. And since um, the enemy uh, deceived Adam and Eve. Yes. And so we know mm -hmm. that these things are in play. But we look forward to the day when Jesus does return and he does set up his kingdom. And then we will be working together with him right. to restore his kingdom right. here on earth. And I can't wait for that. Okay. we I can't wait, but I can't wait. I'm, I'm anxiously awaiting his return. Okay. So, Alexander was not at the height of his power. He spread Greek ideas, customs, and laws into Asia. His plans came to an abrupt end when Alexander became seriously ill with malaria at 33 years old. Isn't that an interesting thing? And then he died. Um, this has been a bit death, a bit con his death was a bit controversial. Some people say, oh, he committed suicide. But others say he was poisoned slowly. This was, who was the other guy? Not Socrates. The guy who died in jail. And they oh, were hemlock. Hemlock. They were uh, they were poisoning oh, with with yep, hemlock. Right. Um, but there was a guy. Well, hemlock wasn't his name, was it? No, no, no. It was a guy. It was Plato. Was it Plato? Was it Plato? Plato? Anyway, or, they were slowly. It might have been Aristotle. Actually. Poisoning him. Mm. Poisoning whoever the, uh, that smart guy was yeah. with uh, hemlock <laughs> until he died. And they actually think that this may have been what happened to um, Alexander. Yeah. Alexander yeah. was a. Uh, I think he was a vivacious young man. I don't think that he chose death. I don't think it was suicide. Um, just like most of the great leaders in the world don't commit suicide. Right. <laughs> That's pretty rare. Can yeah. I say? Okay. They say it's suicide. Mm -hmm. But it was a deliberate accident. A deliberate accident. Same thing with a lot of movie stars. Mm -hmm. Don't just take what mm -hmm. they say. At face value, I have found out so many things it about was the movie stars Socrates, yes. that once the movie stars are like, hey, I'm going to expose everything you yeah. movie people are doing, oh, yeah. uh, all of a sudden, they die. Oh, they hit yeah. Clinton. 
they get, yeah. they get, they exactly. And if they're hung or something, they blame it on something. I, I think of Steve, uh, not Steve. Robin Williams. Um, yes. I don't believe he committed suicide at all. There's oh, several. Do you think he was poisoned? No, I think he was helped him. Was oh, he was they hung him. They didn't oh, like they when he was starting. They didn't like him. Yeah. Anthony Bourdain. The deep I was, state. I was oh a my big gosh. fan of Anthony Bourdain. Yes. Uh, and uh, Kate Spade. I was a big fan of hers. Mm -hmm. I thought she was going to really release some stuff. Anytime they talk about the truth. Then, boy, they're, 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 oh, they're, wow. they're, they don't know. And, and Clarence say. Thomas was poisoned, wasn't he? Oh, I don't know. He's still alive. Yeah, yeah. right. Alive. But he may have been. Yeah, that's what they say. I tell you, it's wicked. It yeah. is very wicked what they want to do. And it hasn't changed. So yeah. don't think that because we yeah. live in 2022, oh, they're all just kind of good to yeah. those people. <laughs> and a young guy who just lost his primary, who was calling out the cocaine and sexual mm -hmm. uh, orgy activity in Congress. I believe that part of why he lost his primary mm -hmm. was that they began coming against him because he was speaking the truth out loud. Was this the one what? in the wheelchair? Okay. What state? Okay, that? that was the South somewhere. Yeah, it was in the, one of the Carolinas or, mm -hmm. or Virginia. It's a young guy in yes, the wheelchair. In a wheelchair. That yeah. Biden, when he met him, he said, stand up. Uh, well, I tell you. <clears throat> And he was calling out was calling the truth out. of what goes on in Congress. Yeah. And every time somebody comes into town, yeah. they get them into a situation where they now can blackmail them oh, by right. drugging exactly. them and, Putting and them in setting a up with pictures situation. of, right. of exactly. illicit oh, yeah. sexuality. Oh, I mean, this oh, it points oh, to John oh, Roberts oh, had the same thing happen right. where I am. John Roberts, the head of the Supreme Court. Supreme Court. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, all of these guys. They, they compromised them, and that's why it was such a big deal when President Trump he, won. He didn't. Because he didn't, they he never didn't thought yeah. that the truth would come out, and all of a sudden they were like, I mean, it wasn't like, it, you know, President of the United States to them is really not that big of a deal. Right. But when they got a righteous, a man, and I'm not calling him, Listen, he's not our pastor. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying, yeah. a man who came out and told the truth. Yeah. I mean, what was the first thing he said to the, the media? You guys are a bunch of snakes and liars, yeah. right? Yep. I mean, he just yep. came out and said, yeah. you guys are lying. Yeah. And, and everything you say is a lie. And he's been totally attacked. And even out of the presidency, yeah. who do they still do they want to attack? Yeah. Right. They don't. This guy, because yeah. they're yeah. afraid he'll come back they don't and come say back. that about Biden. Oh, Even no, no. though he says some of the craziest things oh, on the planet, they just come out and say, oh, he meant this. Right. They don't say he's a liar and a thief and he needs to be killed, you know, <laughs> or whatever. Where, but where, boy, where, I'll tell you. Were the Kennedys killed because they were going to expose? I think JFK was. That's, yes, that, that's what somebody, that's what yes, I, yes, and yes, I think yes. that was actually when things really began right. to be. Uh, right. Okay. Well, it started in the 50s when they brought the Nazis into our oh, yeah. nation That's right. to, yeah. to run uh, the CIA okay. and to in participate in all of the science stuff mm -hmm. to get yeah. the weapons and to get the, the space rockets. Yeah. That was all Nazi technology. Right. And That's when right. we embraced the Nazis, at that point things Seven. started to get really bad. Okay. Kennedy said, I'm going to call it out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Eisenhower called it out subtle. He yeah, called it out. He said, beware of the military industrial complex. Uh, so right. he's pointing to that truth. Because that's, right. that's Nazis were all tied together in a fascist military industrial complex. But wow. he was at the edge. They didn't kill him. They just made him Im impotent. That's right. Kennedy started coming out and was getting followers to believe the truth. Mm -hmm. And they often they, had to kill they him. often. Yeah. And there's been a number of others that have been off. And Reagan was an outsider. Boy, they wanted to kill him. So it's it's like the the minute somebody really comes out. So it's a big deal. Yeah. I look at Mike Lindell. I look at some of these men, General Flynn, who have suffered greatly yeah. for our nation. And President Trump, yeah. who have lost billions. President Trump lost billions. Yeah. And, you know... We, we think, well, you know, he's wealthy, he can take it. I'm telling you, when you have something this wicked yeah. come against you, it's just not, 
I mean, these are grown men who know everything about, I mean, as much as they can. Mm -hmm. President Trump got in there and he said, I knew the swamp was big. I had no idea no, how big it was. And so, I mean, just that statement alone makes you go, mm -hmm. we have been slimed for so long. The amount so, of sex trafficking that comes oh, on God. in that city is That's right. unbelievable. The whole thing about Epstein Island, yeah. all of a sudden, this was the island that they used to pervert every single politician. That's right. And so the everything about it has been exposed so that they can no longer blackmail yeah. and pervert. And yeah. that was yeah. a huge yeah. deal. <laughs> Glory to God that yeah. all of that came out. And and we we don't know all of the repercussions, you know, yet. Yeah. But I think down, you know what? God will bring it up. Wickedness moves at the speed of lightning and truth at the speed of a snail. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so this truth slowly catches up. And uh, we just have to pray that every wicked thing will be exposed. It will. And it will. we just continue we to agree with God. We just have to wait. We don't know when. God will We don't know when. God has a plan. Yeah. But we help by helping other people just, yeah. hey, just, just ask questions. Yeah. Hey, why do you think this? You know, why do you think right now we can ask questions about the food? Why do you think the greatest... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Production yeah. lines. Yeah. Why do you think there's yeah. so many fires going yeah. on in the different yeah. food uh, producers? Yeah. Why do you think? I keep asking myself, why are is uh, hepatitis A yeah. on the vegetables? Yeah, I wondered. I saw that. I thought, what? what? So I, you know, what I'm doing? I'm cooking everything. I guess. I'm not eating any salads right now. I haven't been fixing salads. I unless I can peel like an avocado, you can peel, you peel that. Off, right. I don't know what they're doing. Did you see where the one of the people speaking at the Davos conference? He said by the end of 2023, 50 percent of the population of the world will be dead. I mean, he came no. right out and said it. Was and it, they've got video of him saying it. Right. It wasn't what Klaus Schwab was. No, no, no. no. He said Actually, a lot of stuff. This was, I believe this <laughs> was the CEO of Pfizer who Good said Lord. this. Oh, my god. That 50% of the population will be dead by the end of. Now, they are going to claim that it was the illnesses that right. did this. Right. But they've right. been working right. hard to make the illness and the cure of the illness to Both be fatal. killing them. Yeah. So right. let me just, let me just, that's really good, though. I mean, really bad, but really good news. But, I mean, but they're speaking it up. Let me yeah. just, let me just say, yeah, we they, have to be smarter than the stick and devil. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, when we were in, uh, when I traveled to India, they told, uh, you know, my missionary that I traveled with, which is such a blessing to travel with somebody who really knows what they're talking about. She said, don't eat anything raw yeah, exactly. nothing raw and including you just did not i i brushed my teeth one night with not with both water and i just about freaked out i was like oh jesus protect me but you just get smart whatever country you're in right and i think right now because of the war on our food supply mm -hmm. um we just had better get smart because it was on the strawberries it's on the you know the the the, the lettuce, fresh the vegetables, lettuce. the lettuce, and I would just recommend just cook everything. Yep. Cook it. I you oh, don't have to cook it to death. It doesn't take very much heat to kill things, right. but but yeah. cook it. Okay. <laughs> I don't want any of you Lord. sick. Yes. <laughs> well, so. and there. Well, the, that goes along with what the Lord showed me about a spray or a mist coming across affecting even home gardens. There you oh, go. Yes. And because a, a spray or a mist is also going to affect your water supply. And so exactly. my plan is to get a water vessel in the ground with a, with a, a under, a, over a greenhouse. Yeah. Because you can't feed your exactly. vegetables with toxic water. Exactly. So I would encourage if you have any kind of yeah. ability to do that. I just get your, mid, get gardens inside. Get your gardens out. inside or covered. Exactly. Yeah. I just actually was researching. There's one, one that you actually can lift all over. It's just a green, it's a raised bed. It's on Amazon. It's a raised bed garden. And you can lift a lid over it and keep the lid yeah. down, but it also will water for your yeah. hose. They have kitchen ones like that now, too. Yes. Like you can have a little yeah. one that you can grow like a ton of stuff in. That's right. And so just, 
Just, just be careful. smart. Like, just be, yeah, yeah, just be smarter than that thinking devil. Ask, ask, <laughs> ask the Lord. Ask the Lord. Ask the Lord. Ask the Lord. Amen. And Amen. it says in scripture that, that, you know, it's not the strength of the devil that we have to worry no. about. It's no. his cunning. And right. So we have to outwit yeah, the devil. Sure right. And we can only do that through God's spirit. Through spirit. the Holy Spirit so, and, the Holy and through Spirit. his word. That through his word. And the Holy Spirit will talk to you and show That's you right. what to get. And show right. you how to do it. Right. <laughs> yeah. exactly. So we just we have just to have trust have to ask. Because we don't know what they're spraying up high yeah. in our crops. Yeah. So we just don't know what's going on. And so we just trust the Lord Amen. and he will help us. And he Amen. says he will. Yes. All right. So just I, we say all that to say it's been going on a long yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> too long. Made too long. And um, is half the world going to be dead? No, we agree it's not going to be dead. Their plans are really not good. No. But can I say that Pfizer supports every single newscast on every single channel? So if you're listening to your news, you're getting Pfizer news, which means you're getting a lie after a lie after a lie. And where you might get a little bit of truth, you're going to get, then you're going to get just washed a little mm. lies. We were what my husband has the news on a lot. And I'm talking Fox News too. He yep, said, right. I said, what are they doing? Because they're trying to bring back the masks. And I'm just like, when are they going to wear out? Because they wore, they wore me out three days in. So <laughs> I'm tired of it. I don't want it anymore. So anyway, so we just know that we're gonna, everything is going to be exposed. And the more things are exposed, the madder they get and the more they want to put they push, push, harder. You know, push, they push harder. on us. So we, but we trust in the name of the yeah, Lord, yeah, our yeah. God. And he will, he will help us. All right. Daniel. The prophet spoke about Alexander the Great. And in Daniel 8.8, 8, it says, Where, therefore, he, oh boy, I've got a typo there. I'm getting this ready for print, so I can't believe I have that there. I'm going to mark it real quick. I apologize. Let me grab my. The he go. Get that marked. You know, you think you have everything, and then you see it in print, and you go, ah. Okay. Therefore, the he go. Oh no, that's right. There was the ego. Oh, I'm sorry. Waxed very great. And when he was strong, the great horn was broken. And for it came and out of it, uh, I'm gonna get a better version there. Okay. And out of it came four notable ones toward the four winds of heaven. Now, here's what happened. Alex uh, Alexander was as arrogant as Nebuchadnezzar. They really, he really was. He was I and mean, when you read Nebuchadnezzar boasting, that was Alexander the Great. And can I say, other people, we will see the Herods here pretty soon, and the Herods called themselves Herod the Great. So <laughs> um, Alexander was, was arrogant. He boasted of his exploits. He complained that there were no more worlds to conquer. All was left to Alexander. So then he, he was conquered. Okay. Mm. All was left to Alexander's military successors. Let's change this. Okay. Uh, called the Dionychi. And these are the four notable ones of Daniel 8.8. 8. This group of men fought bitterly again amongst themselves as they carved up the empire. Antigonus Cyclops, and he really did just have one eye. He seized the whole of Asia Minor, including Syria and Israel. Ptolemies took Egypt, North Africa, and each, you know, that whole right. area, which is probably Libya today. And Tunisia, right. All Martin, the way to Morocco. All the way to Morocco, right, right. across. I landed bit. in Morocco. That was an interesting thing. <laughs> um, after, after Africa, landing in Morocco, it's interesting. Anyway, Psych, um, Ptolemy Selu uh, Seleucus or Seleucus Ny Nicator took enormous territory stretching from Mesopotamia toward India. And then others took smaller and significant portions. And then Ptolemy gained control of the Holy Land to the south of Syria. Now, Ptolemy, you're going to see that there's a lot of Ptolemies. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of, um, they name themselves after each other. This leads us to the little horn. In, 19, in 198 BC, before Christ, Antiochus III, the great ruler of Syrian Empire, annexed Israel to his territory. He was defeated by Scipio of Rome 
the region passed into Roman hands for the next 500 years. Now, we're going to see that there's going to be several Antiochuses and next, and we'll start there. We're going to start with Ale uh, Antiochus IV here shortly. Now, I have a note here. When writing this study, many of the texts drawn from use the term Palestine when talking about Israel. Just like everybody believed in God before uh, the 1800s, 1850s, uh, and in the back of their mind, they knew they couldn't argue against God. Um, in about the early 1900s, the land began to be called Palestine. God never called Israel Palestine. Okay. Israel never called it Palestine. No of the other nations ever called it Palestine until, well, Rome was the one who began to call it Palestine. But it wasn't until the British in the 1900s began to name it on the map as Palestine. So the, do you see the change in our vocabulary that has happened, especially in the, year, in the 1900s, really began to happen big. And I would say in the last 20 years in the 2000s, uh, our change in vocabulary, you and I both know we can't say a billion words. I, there's so many words we can't use anymore. Well, and it's purposeful. It's yeah. purposeful. Because if they can change language, and yeah. here I'm pointing to say, if he can change language, then he can change how people think. That's right. If he can change how people think, yeah, he can get way. away with more and more of his deception. And you can't say the truth. Right. So when writing this study, the land of Israel is never called Palestine in Scripture. So this author, me, <laughs> will use the proper name instead of the Roman edition. The term Palestine is considered a political propaganda term right. with anti-Israel implications. Mm -hmm. Those who hate Israel would love to redefine the land of Israel, just as they try to redefine so many other things that God has established. We have used, and here's what Zola Lovett said, he said, we use the name Palestine, which the Roman Emperor Hadrian placed on the country of Israel in 135 AD, until it has become common. So Rome rose to power. They were anti-God, anti-Israel sentiments, and it all gained power. Antiochus IV, was taken as a captive to Rome, where he spent 12 years learning Roman ways and powers. They had to take these leaders and brainwash them, and then they bring them back in, and they do great damage. Antiochus was allowed by Rome to become the ruler of the Seleucid Empire in 175 BC. Later, he took the name Epiphanes, Epiphanes, which meant the manifest one or the visible God. But the Jews, ever the masters of innuendo, named him Epiphanes, or the madman. He set out to Hellenize or force Greek ways on all of his territory. He gave orders to Ju that Judaism must be destroyed. In a series of outrages over two years, including murder, treachery, the ravaging of Jerusalem, and the establishment of, pagan, of a pagan citadel or fortress in Jerusalem called the Acre. Um, the name Acre is derived from the Greek Acropolis. Sorry, I did I'm trying to fix things as we go here. Okay, and signified a lofty, fortified place overlooking a town which dominated both the city and the surrounding countryside. In Jerusalem, the word Acre became to symbolize anti-Jewish paganism, a fortress of the impi impious and wicked. They began to force idolatry onto everyone, including the Jews. To add insult, Antiochus established an altar to Zeus or Jupiter. And know that you're going to we're going to notice a mixing of Greek and Roman things from here on out, which bore an obvious resemblance to Antiochus. So they they made this idol to, to Greek or to Jupiter, whichever you were, Greek or Roman. They wanted to please everybody, and they made it to look like Antiochus. And they put it in the temple. They put this statue in the temple above the altar. Now, if that wouldn't be in the face of the Jews, what would? He proclaimed this idol as the God of Israel. Under penalty of death, the Jews were for, forbidden to practice circumcision, Shabbat or Sabbath observance, or any of their feast days. Now, um, this became pretty raucous. I mean, this is pretty bad. They're demanding that they worship this idol of um, Antiochus. 
and the Jews are are just being slaughtered all around. And I will, can I say that there were many of them killed during this time because they would not do what they were demanding. On December 25th, 167, okay, now, let me just say, we love Christmas, we bless Christmas, <laughs> but here is one, this is where it comes from, a pagan holiday. Okay, you'll hear this in the news area, you know, you'll hear people talking about it. this is a pagan holiday. Okay, that the whole world celebrates Jesus on Christmas. So we want to bless it. Yes. We are not going to change what happened in history. Yeah. We know that the Jews did not celebrate Christmas. They, we know that Jesus did not celebrate his birthday, but we're, we're just giving you the truth. You know, we'll present the facts. You decide. Okay. <laughs> the pig was slaughtered on the altar in the temple, which is the abomination of desolation. I mean, that's the same thing as the picture that what we will see in the temple right. on the day when the Antichrist does the same thing again. And can I say it will be maybe a thousand times more worse. worse. Yes, because it will be the entire world worshiping this idol, this demonized idol in the temple and slaughtering not only slaughtering uh, all of the lambs and the animals, but that will be stopped and it will begin to slaughter a pig. Now, it, it will be shocking. People will be shocked. The Jews will be shocked. The Jews called this the abomination of desolation. The Greek soldiers performed licentious acts in the courts of the temple itself. This was not a pretty sight. It was wickedness, okay? Copies of the Hebrew Bible were destroyed. Now think about it. These were Bibles that were written out, handwritten scrolls, destroyed, drunken orgies associated with Bacchus. And Bacchus is from the Roman diocesan god of wine and intoxication. These were made not, uh, oh, you know, optional, but compulsory. You had to participate. If you can imagine us being made to do this, it's coming. It, it it's would coming. be shocking. It's you coming. cannot this is what say the LGBT a man XYZ. and a woman is a marriage. You cannot say that anymore. Right. You must celebrate homosexuality. And, and they're going to come you, to the day where they're going to force people to participate, not just accept, participate. Exactly. And that's what's going on right now. Copies of the Hebrew Bible were destroyed. And the drunken orgy, orgies associated with Bacchus. Bacchus was a patron of actors and the theater, but also a god of insanity and madness, especially when it was destructive. People who are acting drunk or insane are not acting like themselves. They lose control or they take on another role and they become someone outside their normal civilized self. That is the true role of the god Bacchus. Did you know that the Greek word for actors is hypocrite? Right. 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 <laughs> right. So we have a bunch of hypocrites. Right. Uh. And Bacchus was the god of people who are not being themselves. And if you look up Bacchus on whatever search engine, it brings up Mardi Gras. And that's what that whole Mardi Gras celebration the is. Bacchanal celebration. Is worship of Bacchus. Mm. Because they go down there, they get drunk, they take their clothes off. And that's what's happening. There's only two courses remaining open to the faithful Jews at this time, to die fighting or to die as martyrs. Listen, neither one of those things are bad. <laughs> we die in this world, we live in the next. We live Amen. with Jesus, the one we love. Amen. I want us to get past the whole thing of I've got to save myself. No, We no, no, just no. have to get past it. And, mm -hmm. and because we're headed into this thing where there was this, this, there's this wicked system and we've talked about this. Do you want to go back and do you want to be naive to that wicked system and you want to participate with that? No, I don't. I want to know what is true and I want to dis get, I want to get out of that wicked system. I've gotten out of the banks. I've gotten out of the credit cards. We've gotten out of everything we can think of to get rid of get out of that wicked system that has its hand in killing babies and everything else. It's so wicked. Okay. Amen. <laughs> Brutality against the Jew escalated. There's no army, no leadership, no organization that's going to help them. Now, here's the wonderful story Amen. of um, the, the Maccabean times. 
The elderly scribe named Eliezer was beaten to death for refusing to eat pig's meat. So they're not just saying, oh, you know, if you want to, you can have some. They were jamming it down their throats. It was so wicked. And these are people who had kept themselves clean their entire life and not eaten. Now, you might say, well, why on earth is it so bad? This pig's meat so bad. Okay, let me tell you. <laughs> I did a study 20 years ago plus we had bought hogs and we had bought organic hogs raised correctly killed correctly and they uh, I we bought a half a hog and shared it with somebody and we you know I've been, I've been raised on it okay I'm, most of us have yeah and uh, it was the know. other white meat right <laughs> 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 and so I didn't understand the whole thing, but I always wondered why does the Bible say don't eat uh, pig? Why not eat pork? So I read a book called Holy Cow. Yes. And it was written by a Jewish woman and she talked about the law and how we don't we don't disregard the law, God's law or God's instruction, because it's good. So but then she said, but that didn't convince me. I wanted to find out scientifically why do we not eat pork meat pork. So she she uh, watched or participated or, or read an entire study, but she she quoted it in this book I read, where they there was medical students, and um, of course the, the 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 ones on the side of study and do the bio labs and all of that did a study on pork. Now. What does poor, what, what do pigs eat? Garbage. Garbage. Everything. Garbage. Yeah. They eat everything. You'll, you can give them anything. Yeah. They'll eat it. Okay. And um, if you watch them, you just see how nasty they are. They just, God put them on this earth because they're cleaners, right? Mm -hmm. Same thing with shrimp. Same things with, they, they clean the bottom of the ocean. Yeah. They're, God put them there for a good reason. Yeah. But in the Bible, it says they're just not food. That's all he says. These aren't food. Don't eat them. But do we eat these things? And he gives you all the good things to eat. You know, if it has a clothes, don't eat horse. Don't eat dogs. Don't eat, you know, cats. You don't eat those things. And he tells what the things are that you watch for. You don't eat those things. But you do eat these things, cows, because they chew the cud. Now, so okay, I'm going to give you the easy explanation of this pigs eat anything it goes like a straight line same way with dogs straight line through their body okay and out the other end right it there's no messing around in here it's just dirty food dirty food dirty food and the body doesn't clean it and on top of that pigs don't sweat so you have dirty meat it's dirty meat on the other hand, a cow, which they are at war against right now, which is, isn't that interesting? Yeah. The cow. <laughs> Cows, on the other hand, what do they eat? Grass. 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 They graze. Mm -hmm. They eat uh, mm -hmm. herbs. Okay. Leaves. They eat deer. Deer eat. Same thing. Uh -huh. They graze. What else? Chickens. Mm -hmm. Right? Seeds. Uh -huh. Right? Uh -huh. Okay. And what they eat goes into their system. Cows especially have four stomachs. Yes. And as they uh, chew the cud, they call it chew the cud, that stuff going through their system is being clean. So their meat is clean. It's just science. If we want to believe the science, let's just check out the science. <laughs> the real science. The real science. <laughs> so... It's not a straight line digestive system. It's the same reason humans don't eat humans. Right. Our system goes straight through our stomach and straight out the other end. Mm -hmm. And we don't eat, we're not carnivores. In other words, right. we don't carnivores, don't eat carnivores. We are carnivores, we don't eat other carnivores. We shouldn't eat other carnivores. Um, but cows are not carnivores. Right. Chickens are not carnivores. Right. These are the things that we can eat. Fish, not carnivore. Well, Sharks, you're not supposed to eat. That's right. There's certain types if of fish. If it's got scales, we can eat it. Exactly. But uh -huh. if it doesn't have scales, you don't eat it. That's right. 
And if it's not a bottle cleaner, you don't well, need and, to stop. And those things don't have scales. They don't have scales. You're exactly right. Yeah. I mean, God set it up. He told us how to use our bodies, how to feed our bodies. And it's, it's actually very simple. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when uh, we when I studied that, I'm like, oh, well, I'm not going to bake it. <laughs> right? <laughs> well, that's God. okay. You're right, God. But I'm not giving up, you know, what I love. Turkey bacon. And I, that's exactly what I switched over to is turkey bacon. But you know what? I, I ate bacon until I got sick of it. Mm. And I realized it was making me sick. And that's when I gave That's when I was like, yeah, I'll give it up. <laughs> and we had, like I said, we had bought a cow. That was, or a half a pig, sorry, a half of a hog, and they had it butchered the way we wanted it butchered. I mean, it was very good all the way around, other than we shouldn't have been eating it. But that year, we were the sickest that we had ever been. Our whole family was sick. And it was because I was cooking that all the time. And I didn't buy hog, you know, I didn't buy pork all the time at that time, but because we had one, we were eating yeah. a whole lot. Mm-hmm. And uh, since then, we, when we got away from it, I thought, well, I'll probably be the only one that gets away from it, you know, in my house. But boy, my husband jumped right on that. He said, you're right. We got to get out. We we need to stay away from it. He just said, I started feeling so much better not eating it. And then my son-in-law, who I, you know, I wasn't checking up and seeing who was eating it and who wasn't. I was, my son-in-law, about five years into it, my son-in-law was, oh, well, I can't eat pork anymore. You know what I mean? I was like. (laughs) You know, I was just shocked because I didn't make it a religious issue. I didn't make it a, you know, you're just not going to come to our house and get it. Sorry, I'm sorry, you just don't do it. But we're going to give you the good stuff. We're going to give you a good steak or whatever. And, um, but I never made an issue about it. If you want to go, yeah, absolutely, go right ahead. You know, we're not. (laughs) So... The problem is, is when we make it a religious issue, you know, so I would never beat anyone over the head. But if, if you're sick all the time, I would say that would be fast from it for 30 days. Take, yeah, (laughs) fast from pork for 30 days and just see, or bottom cleaners or anything that else that you're eating that is non uh, clean, like the scripture says. And uh, it's just instruction. Give yourself 30 days and just see how you feel. And I would almost bet. They say, uh, I I have a friend who said they'd gone to the doctor and they had did, done a scan of the husband's brain and he's uh, Hispanic, which is lots of Mexican food, lots of pork. And the doctor came out and said, uh, he's got trichinosis brain. Mm-hmm. And it's it's the, the trichinosis is the thing they say that, that you kill it when you cook it. But it, he, he said, you really can't kill that stuff. He said it's a parasite. It, you have to get off of it and stop it, um, taking it into your system. Mm-hmm. So there's big problems in our physical body. So yeah, point out the scripture where it talks about cleaning. It's in Leviticus and in the Deuteronomy. Earth. It repeats it as well. Yes, repeat. Yeah, second it's the second law in Deuteronomy. Yep. So Leviticus, the food laws. Do you know what chapter that would be? Probably all the way through. It's 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 very easy to find. And uh, I'm not trying to talk you into anything. No, no, no. I just yeah. want you guys to yeah. check it out. Yeah. And it's good to know. Yeah. Came years ago and said that. So Le- Le- Leviticus really? 11. Okay, you Leviticus 11. That makes sense. He's and also if Deuteronomy you 14. In scripture back then, why would you think it's not current now? Right. Well, so, and the typical scripture is, the, they use Peter as the example where the the, yeah. the, the towel is, or the yeah, tablecloth, or whatever what you call about. it, yeah. is let, the sheep is let yeah. down from heaven. No. And God said, don't let what man has called uh, unclean, or what man is, or God has called unclean. Oh boy, I'm, yeah. I'm totally yeah. butchering that. Yeah. But it's the, yeah. but it's that, that thing is the typical yeah. thing that people will say, yeah. well, everything but, is no, available no, no, no. to eat. But yeah. hold on. God doesn't, God didn't say go and eat this. He doesn't nope. change. It. No, he, he doesn't change his mind yeah. in the Old Testament to the New. It's the same and he confirms his word. So isn't there something in Romans too? I've been confused about that. I, yeah. I've read Holy Cow and I know Gail was so staunch on it. Yes. And and um, 
And so I really followed it. But then I thought, well, but it says everything's okay. Now. He's yeah. talking about so, Gentile versus Jewish. Yeah, yeah that part and about. Peter. Yeah, yeah. I, I know that one. Yeah, yeah, but isn't there something in Romans? About about uh, all find the, it and let, and we can okay. bring it up. Okay. That would be good. That would okay. be good because um, we just we just have to work out these things. This is one of those issues we work out with pure tribbling. Lord, help me. You know, help me yeah. understand your law, your instruction, because right. I don't want to <laughs> disobey right. you. Right? right. Right. And so it's not. We don't sure don't want to make it a religious matter in no. any way, shape, or form. I mean, if somebody, if I go over to, in fact, when I was in other countries. You don't know what you're eating. Exactly. Yeah. But you bless it. You yeah. thank the people who made it for you. Yeah. And you say, you know, you honor them. Yeah. And because that's not what this is. We yeah. want to honor and and it's not yeah. religious. But it is for our help, for our okay. good. We want to be careful. <laughs> yeah. And and I can tell when I accidentally get into work. <laughs> I can tell now. Because you can tell once you've been off of it, boy. You can tell. Okay. Yeah. Let's keep going for just a little bit more. Than we'll, I want to pray for you guys if there's anything. But let's real quickly. Well, we went through this during the Maccabean time, or during uh, Hanukkah this last year, where we, we read this. We actually read this story, and I know we read it in this class. So I, 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 I you have this story. If you would read that, yeah. um, uh, then we won't take time to do it in class. But this is the whole story of uh, Mattathias and his five yeah. sons mm -hmm. and how uh, God was merciful to them and how they came to power. And Judas assumed the leadership position because his father died. Uh, Mattathias died. And then the name Maccabee, Maccabee was acquired by Judas, possibly consisting of the first letters of each of the Hebrew sentences of the Bible. Who is like unto thee? Oh, God. Let me see where I'm at. Okay. That's what I'm seven, seven, Okay, page yeah. Seven. Yeah, middle of page seven. So that whole story starts on the bottom of page six and then up to probably page seven. And then you have the story down at the bottom of page seven where it says Hanukkah. So just go through that and remind yourself. And then next week we'll start with the high priest being reestablished in a different way. Because in the, who's supposed to be in the high the high priest? The sons of Aaron. The sons of Aaron right. and the tribe of Levi. Levi, Levi. The, Levit the Levi tribe, the Levitical tribe. They were supposed to be the high priests, only them. That's who God set it up. But because of the what happened with all of this, and then the Maccabeans taking back the land like they did. Now they were of the priestly line. Um, but then it began to be passed down to their family regardless. It became a problem, in other words. But let's read that where it says, High priesthood reestablished. Jonathan, Judah's brother, which was Judah the hammer, assumed leadership and was wise enough to reestablish relations with Rome until he was unwisely trusted a serious a Syrian general named Trypho, who massacred a thousand of us but suspecting troops and Jonathan in 142 BC. Simon followed Jonathan as leader from 142 until his death in 134. He established peace in the land and Israel rejoiced with great joy. The people were so grateful to Simon, that they bestowed. Now see, this is where it becomes a problem. The people were so grateful to Simon that they bestowed the high priesthood on him and his family in perpetuity. Thus, founding the Hasmonean dynasty of the priesthood. And we will talk about that more. So Mark Hasmonean, because that name, Hasmon, was where that name came from. And Simon's son then was John Hercanus, mm -hmm. and that becomes a big problem. So next week we'll start at the legend of the Septuagint, which is kind of fun, um, kind of a fun story, but it will help us kind of see where, <laughs> where we are why we're here, <laughs> what happened to Israel, mm. it becomes a big problem. Let me get my thing over here. Let's see. Okay, there we go. Okay, Legend of the Septuagint. All right. Um, praise the Lord. Father, we just thank you right now, Lord, that you 
our king and ruler of even our history. And we thank you, Father, that we can learn from this so that we'll not repeat it. And we just give you glory and praise and honor, Father, today that um, you are dealing with the story of America, the story of Israel, and you're in this with us. And Father, we give you all glory and praise. Now, Lord, today, we just ask you to teach us your ways. Can we hear, Father, the stories of things that happen and not be discouraged, but rather be encouraged that they struggle just like we're struggling? Whoops. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> you know, they say if you get a phone call in the middle of your uh, prayer, it's like hearing from God. <laughs> right? It's the answer from the Lord. <laughs> so <laughs> we're going to check that out. But Father, we just thank you and we give you all glory all praise and all honor that you deal all the way through our history but all the way through our present and all the way through our future and we thank you that you have it in your hands we give you glory and praise we ask you god to teach us this week help us to remember these things that we've learned and apply them to our lives in jesus name amen, amen.